happy Wednesday. I am actually recording this on Wednesday because yesterday when I tried to record this, it didn't go so well. So the theme I wanted to talk about you guys with is why fear stops people from losing weight. Or at least why it did for me and what I've seen from some of my clients and some people that I've talked to in general, like in my groups and things like that. So basically, I, for myself personally, um, because initially I just couldn't lose weight. And I know people are like, oh, that's a cop out. That's a lie. It's not. Um, I was undiagnosed with PCOS. I did not have knowledge and or access and there wasn't knowledge at most of the time that there was a treatment for PCOS that was out there that could help. Um, honestly, I haven't been doing good taking my pills. I'm going to be quite honest. And it's probably part of my issues with my bloating, but, um, there was a lot of things though. Once I did have the tools or once I knew, um, that made me afraid to lose weight that made me afraid to try. Um, there were some points in my life where I was super motivated. I was going to the gym when my daughter was in dance class. There was a gym like literally in the same shopping center as her dance school. And so I was working out the two hours she was in the dance class and I was working out and busting my butt and working out hard and I was loving it. And I do enjoy working out. That's not something I've ever not liked doing. So that's kind of weird, I guess. Um, but I've always enjoyed physical activity, like just going and doing stuff that, um, keeps me moving. Like it's always been something I've enjoyed. So for me, I really liked working out and I would go work out for fun. And I was not someone who just kind of like, oh, I'm at, the, I'm at the gym, I'm working out. Like I was someone who would on a bike and I still do this to this day. I will bike at a reasonable speed for like a minute. And then for like 30 seconds, I go hard and then I bike at a reasonable speed for a minute and then I go hard because I know I can't stay going at that pace for a long time. But my goal obviously was always to someday, wow, my hair is really ate up, y'all. Um, my goal obviously was at some point I wanted to actually have the ability to go that hard the whole time. Um, and I never really got there, but I would always try. Um, so... For me, you know, I was somebody who was motivated to lose weight a number of times. And when it wasn't happening, I would get so frustrated. And I know I've seen, like, I think it was a little while ago, Beast to Beast did a video about a girl who was talking about her PCOS. And he made the comment, well, if you only try for a month, well, I get what he's saying, but I literally watched my diet really, really closely and busted my butt at the gym six nights a week for six months and lost a total of a pound and a half. Now, when you are extremely overweight and you're working out so hard and for six months you're working with your doctor, you're working with a trainer, you're watching every single piece of food you put in your mouth and you lose a pound and a half, it is so frustrating. Now, granted, I have other complicated issues with my weight, but that is medical. That being said, I am proof that if you have a doctor that listens to you and if your doctor is willing to do the work to find out what you can take to help your conditions, if there's anything out there, you can lose the weight. So if you just say, well, I have PCOS, so I can't lose weight. That is no longer the truth. It's just not. And I've seen people, I've seen people say, well, I don't want to take medication. I don't want to go on that because the, right now the current treatment for metform, is metformin for PCOS because part of PCOS is it keeps your insulin levels so high. Well, this puts your heart at risk. It puts your future being a diabetic as a guarantee. Aside from the fact that just being overweight does both of those things as well. So if you compile, it's going to make you like three times as likely as a regular person to have those symptoms. And, you know, I mean, it's basically like it's going to happen just when. And so it's really important that, okay, maybe you don't like medication. Then maybe there's an alternative that's not medication. Um, I was made aware that the natural alternative to metformin is berberine. Um, I tried berberine. It did not work as well for me as metformin did. Metformin did much better. And I do have some and I do need to go back to taking it. 
because the last couple weeks I have not been great at taking my medication. I go, I just, I need to start setting an alarm again. I stopped taking an alarm because I thought I had gotten into the habit of taking my pills at a certain time and it was working and I just haven't been. And for the last couple weeks I have been swelling. I have been, um, just a lot of my symptoms have come back. The hair was a lot thicker. It came back really fast, a lot faster. Like a lot of the symptoms that I have, um, when that, that, that go away, when I take my metformin, I have them all now. Just from a couple weeks of not really taking my pills and not being thoughtful, not drinking my water. And that is why I know, like I know this week's going to be another gain and it's not due to the holiday. I'm not going to blame it on the holiday because I actually pretty sensible on the holiday. It is because I haven't been taking the medication that helps me. I haven't been drinking my water like I should. Like, sorry guys, my sweatshirt has actually gotten way too big for me. And so now it's trying to choke me to death because it keeps sliding back on my shoulders. Um, so it's just one of those things like you have to do what's right. But I was so afraid of so many things when I did start losing weight. When this all started, I'm like, I'm going to lose weight. I'm ready to do this. I'm going to hold myself accountable. I'm going to make a YouTube channel. And what I wasn't talking about on here was the fear the fear that I woke up with every day, that fear of what if this doesn't work? What if my doctor's wrong? What if this workout isn't what's gonna work for me? What if it doesn't matter what I eat, what medication I take, what if I'm just gonna stay like this? That was my first fear because I really wanted this. But then there were other fears that came in when I started losing weight that I didn't know I had, that I am sure to a great extent in the background has always thwarted my weight loss. And I want to talk about those. So those are, I was so afraid of, well, we don't have a ton of money. I'm going to lose weight and I'm going to have new clothing and I can't afford new clothes and I don't want to wear the same two outfits all the time and I just don't, I don't know what to do. Like, I can't afford new clothes. That was an excuse to not lose weight. I found ways to buy clothes. No, I don't buy new clothes all the time. I'm still wearing some of my old clothes. I mean, this sweatshirt, I mean, it's this sweatshirt. I'm going to stand up here for a second. This sweatshirt used to fit me. It used to, I used to fill this sweatshirt and now it fits like a sweatshirt should like it's baggy, but it's gotten a little too baggy, but it's okay. It's still, it's not too long in the arms really. It's only to there. I can still make this sweatshirt work. It's been a matter of changing my outlook is to getting a couple of new pieces every few months that I can also work, will also work as I lose more weight. Yes, I have a bunch of clothes I've had to donate because they're just so big at this point. I can't wear them. Um, I was kind of sad for a few of them, but I've kept my original dress that I did in my original pictures when I was first losing weight. I really can't use that for weight loss at this point because... I put it on, it just kind of hangs like wide and you can't see my body anymore, which is great. I've lost a whole person, 120 pounds. Um, but I've also kept a pair of jeans because I'm not sure like if I, if I hold up this shirt or if I have to hold the dress behind me, like I don't know how I would use that to show my weight loss, but jeans are definitely an obvious thing. Now the jeans I have are stretch jeans. So they fit me before and they still sort of fit me now. Like if I wear a belt with them, I can make them work. Okay, that's an excuse. They're really too big, but I wear them when I want to wear jeans because they're the only jeans I have. And I don't want to spend money on a new pair of jeans. Honest engines. That's a thing. When I say stuff like that, I have to think in my head, mm, is that true? Why am I saying this? What do I gain out of saying this? What do I gain out of feeling this? Like, that's how I've gotten around a lot of my fears. Another fear was, who am I thin? Who am I not as a fat person? I don't know that answer. I was 20 when I had my son. And uh, he was three, I think. Two, 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 two. He was two. When I got put on prednisone for 18 months. And gained all my weight, which is also the same time my PCOS reared its ugly head full force. But it was, they knew I had it after a couple months, they knew I had it, but there was nothing they could do for it, they said. 
and I was chasing after two kids. I was eating their leftovers. I, I wasn't eating right. I wasn't giving myself a chance to lose weight. Like I've been the size I am, well, the size I was. Um, I mean, I gained a lot of weight in the last year before I started losing weight just because of stress and depression and not taking care of myself and all that stuff. But, um, just, you know, the, the, I've been between the sizes 24 and 28, God, for 23 years, about there. Um, and I've kind of been between those numbers. I've never gotten smaller than that. I've lost weight down to a size 24 before, basically by starving myself. I mean, I didn't do it the right way. Um, but that was at a time where I was going through something and I just didn't eat. Um, now that was one of my fears was who am I as a thin person? Another fear was, oh, I don't want to have to get weight, weight loss surgery. Like the, not the gastric stuff, but like the skin surgery. Realistically, I'm going to have to have that. I'm not going to pretend like my, with the size that my apron area is, I am realistic. I am going to have to have my stomach done. Um, I am realistic that my arms will probably have to be done. I'm realistic my legs will probably have to be done. And I know those will be three separate surgeries. I know they can't do them all at the same time. Um, I would probably opt for my, my stomach first, um, cause I foresee that as being my biggest issue, um, for me, because I can always wear compression leggings to cup, you know, pull my skin and my legs in. I can wear compression armbands on my arms. So stuff I can wear in those, um, but I feel like my stomach, because of the way it's going to be, I will definitely need stomach surgery first. Um, I am not a fan of surgery. <laughs> I've only ever had a C-section, knock on wood, that other than these surgeries, it's all I ever need. Um, you know, so yeah, that's scary to know that you're putting yourself in line for surgery. But if I don't lose the weight, I'm putting myself in line for possibly heart surgery, possibly uh, losing limbs because of diabetes. I mean, the list of surgeries I may end up with by staying fat are much worse. But instead of thinking what the options of staying where I am are, and the fact that getting the skin surgeries are optional, I mean, I just wasn't being realistic with myself. A lot of the fears we have are unrealistic fears. Things that can't be dealt with. Things that are just nothing compared to what staying fat will do to us. So why do we do it? Why do we let these kind of fears rule us? Because it's so much easier to be afraid and not do something than it is to have faith in yourself. Or faith in the people around you. Or faith in someone else. It's so much easier to be afraid. Being afraid means you don't have to try. Being afraid means you don't have to fail. Being afraid means you don't have to be accountable. There's lots of things we don't have to do being afraid. Having faith means you have to take that step forward. Having faith means you have to try. Having faith means you have to take risks. And those are all things that are really hard to do, especially when you spent most of your life not taking care of yourself not caring about yourself. Um, part of my PTSD is that um, I had an incident with a dental person um, who did something they shouldn't have. Um, and so I have um, horrible meltdowns at dentist offices. I went to a dentist a couple years ago to try to have my teeth fixed. And they, I had previously gone to a dentist and they had given me an oral sedative, which actually is Valium. They made me super hyper. And my daughter tells the story really funny. I guess it really was a funny situation, but apparently I was saying I could see the grass growing. Yeah, it had a really bad effect on me. So Valium and I are not friends. Um, so when I went to the dentist the last time, which was like two years ago, they gave me gas because they thought, oh, the gas will work. They gave me the highest dose of gas they could, and I had zero effects. I said, it's okay. I need to have this done. I'm going to be strong. I'm going to stick through this. Just go ahead and do it. And she was doing it, and my hands were shaking so bad. 
And I was shaking so bad. She got about halfway done and said, I have to stop. I'm afraid you're going to have a heart attack right here in my office. She said, you need to find someone who can sedate you with medic, like with an IV. And I said, oh, oh yeah, that's, you know, I was like, let me look into that. So I contacted an oral surgeon that would be able to fix my teeth and um, they contacted the insurance to find out if because my issue is medical, if medical would cover the sedation. Medical said no. It's a dental procedure, even though it's a medical diagnosis for the sedation, it's not covered in the medical. So they called my dental insurance. My dental insurance would not cover the sedation. So I sat down with the doctor because I was the only one I found who would even like take my insurance and offer to do the services because I need to get a lot done all at once because I'm afraid I won't go back. Um, and I'm looking at a $6,000 bill to get it done because just walking in to get my, the sedation is like $1,500. Um, and honestly, when I have the money, it's the first thing I'm going to do. I am going to find somebody to knock me out. If it means I have to get dentures at this point, I don't know. I mean, I'm not going to like show you guys my teeth. I have a broken tooth here. Um, this one has a cavity. I have broken teeth in the back. My wisdom teeth didn't come in until after I was 30 and they've basically come up in pieces. Um, because they never came through. And so I just have like, little pieces of tooth that'll pop up every once in a while. Um, and it's ridiculous. Um, I think I have another broken tooth somewhere else. Or chipped tooth in the back. Um, but I'm always afraid that one of my teeth is going to break. And it just, I, I know there's more cavities in there that I can't, that I don't know about. <clears throat> when I went in, I only had three. I'm sure I have more than that now. <clears throat> um... I know I have gum disease. I know I have all these things because I haven't been able to go to the dentist. And I hate it. But I have promised myself, because even though I'm afraid, the consequences of not taking care of my mouth could lead to a heart attack. It could lead to other disorders. It could lead, lead to so many things. But I haven't cared enough to try to make the money. I haven't cared enough to try to put money away for it. And so I sat down with my husband and I said, Every time I get a health coaching client or a cleanse client or a vision board client or, um, you know, or I get a payment through my other job that I'm going to have when we move, 10% has to go into a fund so that I can find a dentist who is going to knock me out and do the work and either let me make payments or something because I want to be able to know that my teeth are healthy. Or that my mouth isn't going to start falling apart worse. Or that I'm not going to lose more bone. I'm sure I've lost a bunch of bone. Um, like there's just so much going on. And I... I just... I, I'm scared. I'm a, I, I, I don't smile because I'm ashamed of my mouth. I want to be able to smile. I'm losing weight. I want to be able to smile big. I want to... There's so many things I want to do that require me to smile. And right now, I make sure I keep this lip down because of damage up here. I I don't smile like I should. And when I do, I immediately stop. Or I immediately close my mouth. And it's not okay. But that's the fear I'm working on. But I'm overcoming it because I've got a plan. Um, I don't have $6,000. I don't have $6,000 on a credit card I could use. I don't want to put it on a credit card. That's like 20% interest. That's not worth it either. Um, like that would just mean I'd have to make like $20,000 to pay it off. Um, we've discussed when we sell the house, if we have enough looking into it right away when we move. Um, but I won't have insurance at that point to so wait for other insurance to kick in. There's just, there's a lot of complications. Um, I had kind of hoped that I would win at least like, cause with the DDD, DDP thing I started in January you could win a million dollars or $5,000. Like, it depends on which envelope you pick. And all I thought to myself was, man, if I won that five grand, I'd fix my teeth. Because if I walk out with five grand cash, that dentist is going to do the work. And I can make payments on the rest, you know, like, if it's just a little bit, I can do that. Or I could probably put it on a credit card or get a loan or something to get my mouth fixed. But I didn't, so that's fine. Um, but, I mean, I never cared about my teeth. I didn't care about anything about myself. 
because it was easier. Being afraid to face our fears is hard. It's actually harder than facing them. I gotta be honest with you. I faced a lot. Um, I wasn't going places because I didn't want to use a scooter because I felt like, oh, well, there's old people who need a scooter. I just need a scooter because I'm fat. Well, technically, I needed a scooter because I have back damage from epidural that went bad. It's not just that I'm fat. Yes, I'm fat. And yes, it does aggravate the damage that was already done to my back. But that being said, I, I, I made a decision not to take care of myself. And I made a decision to make my back injury worse. And so I always felt bad. But then my husband convinced me, get a scooter. I want you to go places with me. Again, I miss going places with you. And I realized I've missed out on a lot of my life because of fear. And maybe you haven't gotten to that point yet. Awesome. But don't get there. Yeah, facing stuff you're afraid of is hard. But if it's something you can't get through on your own by talking yourself through it, go to a counselor. There's nothing wrong with a counselor. Say, you know, you've got these fears and you don't know how to work through them. Have your counselor help you. They can give you a tool in one or two sessions that you can use. It doesn't have to be a lifetime therapy session. You know, I mean, but it can be a lifetime change. So, fear sucks. Facing your fear, not easy, but it really doesn't suck. So, maybe try it. Maybe it'll help you. I know it helped me a lot. So, I'm sorry this was so long, but fear is something that really has been a game changer for me. Um, facing my fears has made all the difference. And facing your fears isn't something anybody else can do for you. They can support you. They can be there for you. But they can't do it for you. So keep that in mind. And good luck, guys. See you later.